Please welcome Marco Kostelain, VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. Good morning, everybody. Global food security and carbon footprint are major challenges we are facing today. We just heard the EU UN, uh, and some is going on right now. Um, so, my name is Marco Kostelain. I'm a research team leader at, the, at, the at, at, at VTT. And we work on global food solutions um, with the industry, and we, uh, we solve major problems there. Um, precision fermentation is at our core. And we nominate, nominated Onego Bio because they provide true solutions for food security, sustainability, and they will aid biodiversity with their, uh, with their platform. And with that, I would welcome Chris to the stage. Thank you very much. Breaking the wall to an animal-free future of food. Christopher Landowski, Onego Bio. The next food revolution will occur around food. And the things that we eat and how we produce it will undergo radical change in the next decade. But this story starts with an egg. It's a bundle of perfect nutrition in a clever package that only nature knew how to design. It's because of the perfect nutrition and its functional properties that it has established itself as the cornerstone in our food culture around the world. However, the traditional way of producing eggs is fragile in and uh, inefficient. Fragile in that a bird can get sick from bird flu, and there's millions of birds uh, dying every year. And inefficient because a chicken can only produce one of these per day as much as humans have tried, one per day. So this is a very insufficient approach uh, to um, providing food for the whole population. And did you know, just recently, the world population exceeded 8 billion people. So in order to get the food that everybody needs, we need to decouple ourselves from animal agriculture. And one way to do this is through precision fermentation. Precision fermentation allows us from the same piece of land, from one hectare of land, for instance, we can produce 10 times higher amount of the, uh, of the pro pro food protein at a 20% lower cost. So how do we do this? We actually use an industrial microbe, and we, that's a food grade microbe, and we actually engineer it to produce the uh, bioalbumin egg white protein. And what we do is we feed it uh, sugar. And with sugar, it's very happy and it wants to produce the protein in a bioreactor. And in this bioreactor, uh, it's a very similar process to brewing beer, except we're actually brewing eggs in the same way. And what we do is then we separate the liquid part and we extract the bioalbumin powder. And from the bioalbumin powder, that is the product, the food ingredient that we're selling. But we have originally um, uh, published this study, which we estimated that uh, we can produce the same egg albumin powder at a 90% smaller environmental impact than the traditional chicken farming. And we have uh, no impact from animal uh, avian flu viruses. And the other amazing thing about the, the uh, technology is that we don't have any side stream wastes. The fungal biomass can actually be reused as packaging material or as bio leather. So our competitive advantage is that we have here, uh, as opposed to the traditional systems, yeast and bacteria, we have found a uh, fungal system from the Solomon Islands where it has been enjoying the nice weather and we've actually uh, engineered it with world-class technology, like such as here, all these different patents include world-class innovations that we are able to then uh, improve the production of our microbe. For instance, these are the production levels. We can produce 120 gram per liter of secreted protein from our Trichoderma ricea, and this scales up into large processes. And that is important because we want to reach 5 to $10 per kilogram, which is a similar price to what chickens can do. So in order for mass consumption of this, that needs to happen in that way. Here are some of the many advantages of our technology. And we feel that um, this is why this will be the food, uh, future of food production. So the egg white protein is one of the most popular proteins in the world. It is used widely across the food industry because of its 
uh, good foaming and gelation properties. And as I said, there is no other way to replicate or to uh, find an alternative for the egg white protein through plant material. So we must produce the real thing. And this is also better for the environment and is animal free. And also for the animal welfare, it's a very important thing to consider. So we are a spin-off company of VTT Technical Research Center, Finland, where we have been developing this technology over decades. And as Onego Bio started <coughs> at the beginning of the year, and we have raised 14.5 million uh, euros to commercialize this technology. And we have assembled a world-class team of molecular biologists, food chemists, and fermentation scientists to bring this to the market. And we're now seeking the approvals from the US FDA, that's one of our next tasks, and to scale this up to produce enough of the product so that the whole world can enjoy and benefit from this technology. Thank you. Perfect. The last second. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. We can uh, now go to the Q&A for four minutes. You can, if you feel uh, better without a mask, you can also um, take yes, it off, as you I, like. I have forgotten it was on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We have it's still four minutes to see you. So who has the first question here? There's Yuri. Yes, please. Can you comment on your competitors? So how competitive is the, the field where you... Yeah, exactly. I mean, that has a lot to do with the technology that we use. There's another company from California. Uh, they use a similar process, but they're using a yeast-based process, and they cannot reach the scales and the price points that we can uh, with industrial microbe. For instance, uh, this particular one is used in the enzyme industry, produce industrial enzymes, which are very cheap. So we have used the same technology to be able to achieve the lower price point. So we're actually you know, more potentially more profitable uh, using our approach and been able to reach enough people that need the product. Mm -hmm. The next question is here, then we will take this one and then this one, please. Actually, it's answered? Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'm going to jump to this one and I will go back to you after uh, uh, Anna. Please, can we have the microphone to this gentleman here, I think? Yeah, I think that's okay. And then, no? Okay, so oh, you? Yeah, okay, so let's go for it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you, really cool. Um, when you talk about productivity per hectare, is there what's calculated in there? Because also the glucose needs to come from somewhere. Well, it's also the, all the energy needed. Yes. So, you know, from the food substance, from the glucose source, or we actually also can use uh, uh, um, uh, starch or some other things that we're just calculating the energy that would have fed chickens or for the bioreactors right. and all the stuff that goes around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we published in Nature Food, uh, this sort of uh, <coughs> life cycle analysis study. So that is how we have calculated these mm -hmm. parameters. Cool. But yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. So Anna has a question. Thank you very much. Um, about the microorganisms, are they genetically modified, and does it limit your your market? No. Yes. Exactly. Um, the organism itself is genetically modified. Of course, it contains a chicken ovalbumin gene, which is the chicken egg white protein. But we separate the biomass, which is genetically modified, and we separate that from the liquid, which is where the protein is, is put. And that protein is I identical to the chicken protein, so it is not GMO. The product itself is not GMO. Stefan, you have a question too? Yeah, I think your product has yet, it's not yet commercialized. It's not yet commercialized, but what does the initial taste, gr taste groups say about the, the, the difference between the true egg and your fungi-based yeah. protein? That's a good question. I mean, we have been tasting it ourselves, and it tastes pretty normal. I've actually given some samples to some people. We have made little meringues, and I was you know, sampling some of them, some people, and they would say, what's the big deal? It tastes just like egg. It tastes like the other products. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. That's what it's supposed to do. It tastes exactly the same, um, just produced in a different way. So in that way, um, yeah, it's an uh, identical protein and identical taste, I suppose, from that point of view. But of course, we haven't. Uh, we have to look a little bit more into all the different applications that we have. Of course, there is a wide variety, but we've been sticking towards in towards the bakery and confectionery things right now, and that seems to be the same. We have a question here, Geneviève, and then we will take this one. Yeah, I was wondering in your um, product, are you thinking of doing something with the byproduct, with the filament? You, you said something about uh, leather. Yeah. Is that also taken into account into your business model? Yes, 
Yes, yeah, so I mean, that's also uh, a good part of this that um, if you think you can uh, valorize this whole process by not throwing away the waste, I mean, bio leather or leather alternatives are a huge market, of course. So this is part of what we think that we will provide the material to someone with a method, or we can say, uh, or could, you could well, give our biomass to somebody who would be willing to pay for it and with some process to make leather. We're also investing in that kind of um, research into how to make the bio leather. We have done such first steps in VTT already now, but uh, we're trying to improve it so that we have a really high quality leather product, but it's actually really nice, yeah. Thank you very much, and with this, we have the four minutes left. I'm very sorry not to be able to take your question. Thank you so much. That was uh, interesting. I mean, like, uh, I don't know if it solves the problem of the chicken or the egg, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. And let's go to the next startup.